shows the decisive leadership that has been shown on this occasion. I call the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Madam Speaker, that speech was nearly as big an embarrassment as Claire Curran is as a minister. This is almost comical in what has occurred. We have a Minister of Open Government, actually the very first Minister of Open Government that's ever existed in this parliament. And the promise of the Minister of Open Government was to be the most open and transparent government that this country has ever had. Yeah, that's right. And then what we find out from that minister up to that? is not once, but twice, that minister behaved in a secretive, in a sneaky, in a dirty way. Could there be more time? And the contribution from Greg O'Connor and Chris Hipkins in this debate shows the government doesn't get it. If you come to this parliament as a new government, promising to be open and transparent, surprise, surprise, we expect you to practice what you preach. Now, let's come to the events that have led to Claire Curran's resignation as the Minister of Open Government. Firstly, we have the incident with Radio New Zealand. Let's understand how important that is. A free, politically neutral media goes to the heart of how our democracy works. We're not, well I hope we're not, I sometimes doubt it, when I hear members opposite, we're not one of those countries where we have a state media that just spins the government like, like you might get in a North Korea or a Zimbabwe. And here we had Claire Curran having private secret meetings That's right. with the head of news, That's right. not some public servant. What is the Minister of Broadcasting doing having meetings, secret meetings, with the head of news at Radio New Zealand. There wouldn't be a member in this house, even my newest colleagues, that wouldn't have a feeling, well, that doesn't feel quite right. No. I'm the Minister of Broadcasting. I shouldn't really be having secret meetings with the head of Radio New Zealand News. But here's the part, Madam Speaker, that has me gobsmacked. The week after this parliament admonishes her for being dishonest about the secret meeting, guess what Claire Curran does? She arranges a, another secret meeting, this time wearing her portfolio as the Minister of Digital Technologies. Now, Madam Speaker, I've been here for 28 years. I've seen some ministers goof it up. What I have never seen is a dicky minister commit exactly the same crime just one week after there's a massive controversy. Now, as Simon Bridges correctly said, there are only two possibilities here. Either she's dumb or she's dishonest. I'm sorry, there could only be two explanations for that course of events that has occurred. And let's dig into the issue of the appointment of the information officer for the government. Now, is there a single member of this parliament that doesn't understand the neutrality of the public service? I hear lectures all the time when we are in government That's about right. respecting the neutrality. I even heard speeches from clear current lecturing the previous government about the neutrality of the public service. Now, I have never heard, Madam Speaker, of a minister privately and secretly meeting about the appointment of a very senior public servant to be made by this government. I challenge members opposite, tell me a single example that you can think of in the last 20, 30 years where a government appointment has been made 
And that is being done in a secret meeting. I can tell you, Madam Speaker, I've had 14 different ministerial portfolios. I have never had a meeting in 14 years of which my ministerial staff did not know. What is going on? What is going on in the culture? What is going on in the culture of the ministerial officers of this government that they have to keep secret, that they have to keep secret meetings that they're having? Well, Megan Woods is interjecting. I say to Megan Woods, how many meetings have you had that you've kept secret from your ministerial staffers? Andrew Little confessing he has secret meetings without knowing his ministerial staffers. And all that reminds me of, including the interjections, is how low the standards of integrity have already fallen in this government. You see, the members opposite, members opposite campaigned on being the most open, transparent government ever. Yeah. And my criticism this afternoon is not just of Claire Curran. I want to go to the Prime Minister. How open and transparent was it for the Prime Minister to announce Claire Curran's resignation at 4pm on a Friday? Right. Does that meet members opposite standard for the standards of openness and transparency? Strange silence. They have their heads hung across on those government benches, and appropriately so. Because, Madam Speaker, this actually goes deeper, deeper than just Claire Curran. This goes to the heart and to the character of the government we now have. Because it's not just in the area of open and transparent government that there is a canyon between the promise and the performance Actually, if you dig into every single area of this government, it's all as though if they say words, somehow that delivers results for New Zealanders. Here's the bit from Claire Curran that I found extraordinary from the government. You have the government announce that open government is so important, we're going to have to, Madam Speaker, have a strategy for open government. And so members of the Cabinet opposite produce a 24-page open government strategy. And members on this side of the House ask Claire Curran, can we have a copy of the strategy under the Official Information Act? And here's the comical part. Every single page of the open government strategy Explain was now. kept secret. Was kept secret. Now, it would be hilarious, Madam Speaker, if it were not so serious, again, it illustrates the gulf between the promise of this government and its performance. And here's the last part, Madam Speaker. Has any member of this House recall any time in the last 30 years when you've had two ministers effectively fall over in one week? No, no, that is a shambles. That is the sort of incompetence that is now being showing in this government. And it's more serious than this. This is a government that's been lecturing New Zealanders about issues of physical violence, and it's being practised by one of its ministers. Isn't that extraordinary? And then we have the incident over the same recess of their secret report on the Labour Party camp. And I challenge members of opposite. Where is the openness and transparency when you commission a report about the awful incident that occurred at the Labour camp over the sexual abuse of young people and they keep it secret? Right. So whether it is on sexual abuse issues, whether it's on physical violence, whether it is on open government, this is a government that says one thing and does the opposite. They have lost their moral authority and the resignation of Claire Curran is just a smell of the rot that exists within this government in which they are promising New Zealanders one thing and delivering the exact opposite. Any Prime Minister, whether it was Bill English, whether it was John Key, whether it was Helen Clark, would have dealt with the, Helen, the, the Claire Curran issue the clear current issue that occurred way back in February, 
far more decisively and equally so applies to the very serious accusations that I have not heard in 30 years of a minister assaulting a staff member. The rot in this government runs very, very deep indeed. I call Kiritapu Allen. Well, goodness me, if we've ever heard